Uh, so welcome to the September 18th meeting of the Development Review Board, the City of Montpelier. Um, we are going to let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and then we will proceed with our meeting. Do you want to introduce members first for just... Um, sure. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Tradition. Okay. Um, I'm a little unsure about how to do this. Normally, I'm like to my right, um, but <laughs> there's no down my right. Um, so, is there an order? Oh, that are... uh, I would just pick what, how it works on your screen with whoever is showing okay, up at the top. So Move your way down. Kevin O'Connell. Kevin O'Connell, board member. Great, Brian. Uh, Brian Jones, board member. Uh, Joe. You there, Joe? Just yeah, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, and Michael, I believe. I'm Michael, the Zortek board member. Thank you. All I think right, that's everybody, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, a quick little overview. Um, and this is the stuff you're going to see on the screen is more for anybody who might be watching um, via Orca Media because we are live streamed. Um, there is some information for everybody who's on remotely to just pay attention to. So, for, and of course, I just misplaced my little cheat sheet. There we go. Um, so, for Anyone viewing tonight's Development Review Board meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's discussion via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. So for the video options where you can see everything we're seeing and talk and um, ask questions, you want to type this link into your web browser and then I'll let you into the meeting. Um, alternatively, you can dial in using this phone number and this meeting ID, um, put in the meeting ID when prompted, and I will get a little notification and let you into the meeting. If you're having problems getting into the meeting over Zoom, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. And actually, if you're having bandwidth issues, we suggest that you turn the video on Zoom off, and then usually um, the sound and everything works out okay. Um, for everyone who's attending, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise for everybody involved. And please reserve the chat function for troubleshooting or logistics questions. If you have a question or comment about an item on the agenda, please raise your hand either physically or by using the raise hand button on your toolbar. Um, and then uh, when the, the chair is called on you, you we ask that you please state your name. Um, and if you are someone other than the applicant or somebody representing the applicant, please also state your address for the record. Um, and do, 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 we don't have a lot of people, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, in the event the public is unable to access tonight's meeting, it will need to be continued to a time or place in place certain because this is right now the only way to access the meeting. Um, all right, I will hand the meeting back over to the chair. Okay. Um, has everybody had a chance to review the agenda? And I'll make a I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Great. A motion by Kevin. I'll second it. <clears throat> second by Michael. Great. Um, tonight for our meeting, we have just one application in front of us, and it's a request for de demolition of a historic barn. The applicant's Tucker Hayward. Is Tucker here? Uh, nope. So Adam okay. Krakowski is going to be on representing okay. the application tonight. Okay. So Adam's here for that. Um, it's at 12 J Street. The application number Z 2023-1013 or Z 1003. Um, and Meredith, if you, you want to do just a very brief introduction uh, and then we'll maybe uh, let Mr. Krakowski speak. 
Yeah. Um, so like you said, this is demolition of a historic structure. So that is the main reason this is here before the board, because I don't have the authority to approve that kind of a demolition project. Um, unlike most of the demolition uh, projects that have come before the board in the five years I have been here, this is not demolition of a part of a structure with a rehabilitation plan or something along those lines or, or an addition. Um, this is just the demolition of the building in its entirety. Um, and as you see in the application package, that's actually something that has been um, um, supported by our building inspector, our fire chief, and the Montpelier Historic Preservation Commission. So this is a very different application than the board has seen before for these kinds of situations. Um, this this seems to fit be much more of a sort of a health and safety situation. Um, and so, you know, the key is that the board needs to um, make its analysis under that section 3004. Um, and that's laid out in the staff report for you. Great. Thank you so much. Um, Adam, uh maybe you would like to you know, um give us a kind of a brief overview of the project from your perspective and i would also just um if you there wasn't a lot of information um about your sort of credentials regarding this like what your experience with either restoration or demolition or whatever it is that you your expertise that you're bringing to this so i wondered if you could speak ever so briefly about that and then maybe talk about the project a little bit uh, sure. My my name is Adam Krakowski. I hold a Master's of Science in Historic Preservation from the University of Vermont, and I work in the preservation field as a uh, furniture, historic woodwork, and uh, art uh, conservator and handle projects at historic sites around the state, including the Vermont State House. And um, Tucker is a friend of mine who had asked me um, this summer to take a look at uh, the barn at his property at 12 J Street. Um, I used to be a neighbor of his uh, just up the street on Loomis and had moved uh, over to Plainfield, Vermont five years ago. And um, Tucker had uh, asked me just in terms of the woodworking and uh, the historical structure um, to give me, yeah, he asked me to give my thoughts about it and um, looking at uh, the structure, and I looked at it um, both before the um, the tragic flooding in July, and then I did look at it again um, in August with him. And um, even though my overview is always to save uh, a historic structure, um, my take on looking at it, um, I did not enter the structure uh, due to my own safety concerns. Uh, the building is listing at a significant angle um, with essentially... Um, the rundown of the barn, uh, my estimate of it would be a uh, around a 1925-1930 uh, carriage barn, uh, and it, there's remnants of what looks like stalls next to um, the carriage barn with a simple shed roof. And the barn itself um, is just simply um, a very basic uh, stone and very shallow stone foundation, um, and then it's essentially... The damage that I, I observed in person was that all four sills of the structure have rotted through um, essentially the the rafters and the decking and the, the actual cladding of the roof is rotted away and exposed to the elements. Uh, there's what I can perceive as significant water damage to the second floor. And um, there were definitely uh, uh, rotted joists that I observed um, standing uh, um, on the first floor, of, which is actually a dirt dirt uh, floor on the first floor, uh, looking up um, into the rafters. And while some, and I would gauge about 25% of the structures intact, um, this would clearly be a rebuild versus a restore situation where some of the materials could be salvaged to be reused, but there, there's no way to honestly restore this structure and maintain its historic integrity. Um, what you would be looking at, uh, the exterior of it is a board and batten um, construction running vertically. Um, there's, uh, I believe that the left uh, barn door um, is missing um, entirely. Um, and with the list that's occurring with a, another property um, directly in its at its angle, um, there's this this structure would be could in in 
I would estimate the short term cause further damage by uh, collapsing or falling over into a neighboring property. Um, speaking with Tucker, um, what his plan for the site was that uh, he was going to have it removed and simply uh, seed with grass and um, was talking about possibly putting some trees in uh, in terms of erosion control. Um, he um, he told me he has a second permit, I believe, with the town uh, or the city uh, in regards to repairing his sewer line that was damaged um, in the front of the house. And he does not have at this time any um, plan for any future structure. Um, you know, that it's really at this point, he, okay. he wants to take the barn down due to the, the safety issue that's at hand. Okay, and that's a pretty complete overview, I think. Uh, <clears throat> so there, um, in just looking through the, uh, you know, the guiding ordinances and the materials on the staff report here, it seems like um, the first, uh, the first parts uh, that there's not, uh, you know, there's the, um, General use standards, uh, there's not going to be any changes of use. Um, there's going to be increase in pervious surfaces, so that's a good thing. Um, and it does look like there is a demolition and site restoration plan. Um, you talked about trees for erosion control. Now, it looked in the application like that, um, that that... Uh, the grass was sufficient that just to receive that, that area. Yeah, that would be that would be his plan. You know, he he made a comment. Uh, you know, at one point that you know he has an apple tree, and you know it was just like, oh, maybe I'll put another apple tree, and I don't know. But it was his concern was to make sure that there was you know the runoff because the the property is sloped down um, slightly, uh, and that's at the back of the property that he would. You know, his plan was immediately to to sow with grass um, and then just, uh, you know, whatever was needed or recommended, he would, you know, he would abide by. Great. Um, do other board members have questions before we start working through this uh, this application? Anything that struck anybody off the top of their heads or that they want to get out there? The one thing that struck me is that it is so, the, the structure is so far deteriorated that I would think that uh, the building code just on a safety uh, uh, concerns would uh, would be sufficient to allow the demolition. I, it's, I, it's what's known as an attractive nuisance. Yeah, I mean, being a being a fourteen year old kid running around there, I could just imagine that would be an awful lot of fun, dangerous fun. Yeah, I I, I uh, tend to agree with you on that. Um, okay. <clears throat> um, so, uh, Meredith, I don't know if you put it on the record earlier, but um, can you just go over quickly the um, town offices in support of the demolition of this uh, property, just so that we can get them listed on the record? We forgot to swear in witnesses. Okay. Well, um, Adam, <laughs> we're going to yeah. back up. And, yep, so um, Adam and Jim. Jim's a neighbor. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So both Adam and Jim. I hope you've told the truth so far, but I'd like you to raise your right hand right now and solemnly swear the truth to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. I do. Great. Thank you. And my apologies for missing that step. First meeting as the chair. <laughs> Not my first meeting running a meeting, but... <laughs> um, so yeah, Meredith, if you could just list, um, you know, who you contacted and basically, uh, I know in... Uh, the historic commission I know didn't have a quorum, but I think they should be included yep. in that. Yeah. Um, so there was Michelle, Michelle Savory. She is the city's building inspector. Um, and then there was also um, Robert Gowans. He's the city's fire chief as well as a health officer. Um, and, and he and Michelle work together to determine the um, safety of buildings. They work together if, you know, post fire, anything like that. Um, and then on the Historic Preservation Commission, the members that were in attendance were um, the chair, Eric Gilbertson, who has 
worked for preservation for as a historic preservationist for decades um, and actually helped run the state of Vermont's um, barn preservation program when it began again decades ago and their grant program for that. Um, they're also Paul Carnahan, who worked for um, years for the I think it was the Vermont the historical the he library. Was the, he was the head librarian for the yeah. Vermont Historical Society. Thank you, head librarian for the Vermont Historical <laughs> Society. Um, um, and was it? Sorry, I'm trying to remember. If it was Yana who was the third member on that night. Um, yeah. Uh, Yana Walder. So Yana is not a historic preservationist, but she has lots of experience with historic buildings here in Montpelier. She is a property manager um, who deals with the restoration of lots of different um, commercial and residential buildings here in Montpelier. So the three of them signed off on a letter um, to the board supporting the demolition of this building as having lost its historic integrity. Okay, great. Um... Uh, Mr. Burke, did you want to um, contribute here? Hello? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was unmuting. Oh, uh, that's okay. Yeah, we're we're on the main. Can you? Oh, right? yeah. Thank you. I was just going to ask for your address, but go ahead. We're uh, we're at one eighty five Main Street. Um, our backyard backs up against the backside of his barn. Um, if you look at the pictures that were in the application, the the side with all the siding falling off is faces our backyard. Um, our concern, I mean, we've been worried about it for quite a while um, and watching it slowly collapse over the past several years. Um, our concern is that it's going to fall over partly onto our property. Um, I've got a spruce that I planted in 1995 um shortly after we purchased the place and you know if if it collapses onto that corner it's very likely will take out that tree um so we would we would prefer to see it gone we don't have any okay need so you're it. here in support of the application yes okay great thank you um so i think that i think the critical point for the board members tonight um which kevin has addressed somewhat uh is that um, we would provide a clear and substantial benefit to the community is what we need to look at. Um, certainly that uh, the safety seems to be paramount, that that, that is the, very much in danger of collapsing. Um, so that certainly seems like a, um, a clear benefit to the public, going to have a barn fall on them. Um, other thoughts about that? Other board members? Yeah, hey, Sharon, this is Michael. Okay. Uh, I'm curious to know if anyone can speak to what the barn looked like in 07 when the property owner purchased the parcel. Uh, I, I, I've i known Tucker since 2010, so I can only attest to 2010. And um, as far as my recollection, you know, the barn had been missing the barn door um, from that time the roof on the carriage side uh the three i believe it's three stalls um if you're facing the barn to the left that are still standing uh two two of the roofs have had uh the shed roof had completely collapsed in the third one had started to fall in um i know as long as i've known tucker he had uh kind of a covering on the already deteriorated roof and um, in my honest professional opinion, that uh, from the point of purchase in 2007, the roof was already deteriorated to to an extent. And was, was there any attempt to try to salvage or restore the building at um, any point? The only uh, thing that I am aware of is that Tucker did have a roofer come in and do a uh, patch repair on the side. I believe that's facing Mr. Burke's property, um, as well as also on the front, uh, facing into the property. Um, and I, I do not know at what time that was the case. And I, I had moved away from Montpelier in, uh, January of 2018, um, and have sporadically, you know, been, been at his home. And a lot of times due to my work schedule, it's in the evenings. I see it at that point. 
And has there been any attempt to delist the building? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Meredith? Um, so just to comment on that delisting, that process would need to be something that the um, Historic Preservation Commission would do because it's a building that's listed within the um, National Register District. It's not a single individual listing that the property owner made. Um, and so when the property was reviewed in 2016, which was the last time that it was updated, um, the the carriage shed at that point was still considered to be in good enough condition um, to stay on the the register, but it's also that was something where I think it was just viewed from the street. So there's not a great street view of that. Um, you know, it was that was sort of a, a quick drive by um, because they were looking at expanding. Um, and if the the barn hadn't been um, easily viewable where the damage sections were from the street, they wouldn't have seen it. That was more of a windshield survey. So anything they delisted in 2016, those were mostly properties that were really easily viewable from the street because that's that's all they have the authority to look at. Uh, I kind of yeah, I, I mean, I could just speak from my perspective with the town of Stowe. I mean, I'm deeply embroiled in several historic structures, which is sort of beyond the scope of this, but we are uh, we the town of Stowe are in the process of having a building delisted, at least from the state's perspective, and it's not as onerous as you might think. And just my, I'll be transparent. My general concern is allowing a building that's listed or at least part of a historic district to deteriorate to the point where then the only recourse you have is to remove it. And then you sort of lose the evidence and significance of the barn. And as someone who works for a municipality, I understand that it is incredibly time consuming and complex to deal with historic structures. However, there's a boatload of money out there to assist folks. And so I just have a general concern about this. And, and Meredith, can you remind me? I feel like we dealt with this with a shed. At one point in the last three or four years, with a historic shed or a barn that was in poor condition, and I thought we had thought we had um, not voted to demolish that. So there were a couple different ones that you're thinking of. Um, so there was there was a shed attached to a barn and the shed was allowed to be demolished to then be able to relocate the barn to save the barn because the barn was the more significant historic structure um, that did end up getting appealed. Um, but then the court decided it on the grounds of the benefit to the community of saving the bigger barn to be able to destroy destroyed the small shed. There was another one where there was a shed attached to a building and the building was going to be renovated. Um, and there was a determination that the shed itself was not mentioned um, in the um, description of yeah, the building. That's what I'm thinking about. Yep. Yeah. And so the shed was allowed to be demolished. Okay. Um, because of the poor condition and then it was determined it, it itself did not really have a historic nature. Um, so, uh, you know, and the, the in Montpelier, because Montpelier is a certified local government, um, the Montpelier's Historic Preservation Commission is the entity that would be involved in doing a removal of something from that particular um historic register listing um and mm -hmm. they they have at least three of those members the three that we were able to get um wrote in support of in this particular case a demolition um a reminder that we are trying to amend this demolition provision um the flood has sort of held that all up 
Um, there was a draft um, from Mike Miller on my desk. Actually, I saw it the Saturday before the flood. I did not pick it up and bring it home. So it got washed away. Um, and since then, we have not gone back to that. But that is one of the provisions that may be folding into the zoning changes that the Planning Commission is going to be considering over the next several months to make this process um a more of a multi-step process, I think, where where the, Mike's Michael's concerns will be more clearly addressed is my hope. Yeah, Michael, I actually had the same thought um, in looking at the application. Is that it's like it is kind of a shame that 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 building's gone. You know, it's yeah. a carriage house. So how cool is that? Um, you know, but and uh, you know, I just I guess I I just wondered where the that kind of the intersection of where somebody can afford to do it or not afford to do it like financial hardship and then or just leave it until it just falls in you know into into disrepair that can only be you know rebuilt instead of renovated and i i i guess i was having a hard time trying to figure out what an appropriate regulation for that would be like how do you how do you address that problem um you know, it's interesting that you say that there's a lot of money out there for that. I mean, I know that, um, you know, that's that's always tricky, too. So I, I, I think it's a very good point. You know, and I um, I can see where there would be a concern that people would just, if they didn't want to renovate or uh, expend that energy or time or money, that they would just let it drop, you know? So I don't know. Does the historic, I mean, does the, does the town's well, historic commission go through and reevaluate periodically so i should just be clear that you know i am a municipal employee i'm not a private citizen and the the burden on private citizens to maintain upkeep and restore historic structures is not i mean it's significant so yeah. i have the benefit of being part of a municipality and okay. i think this is a larger problem than than just tucker yeah. and, and adam in this particular building you know we as a a society determine that this is important and then we don't provide any technical support or financial assistance to maintain something that we think is important so yeah. it's a it's a strange catch-22 for folks like tucker who i'm guessing at no point in the past 15 years had the financial capacity or the ability to manage grants to restore this carriage yeah, barn or turn it into a multi-use building so this isn't about Tucker or Adam. This is more about just the process of dealing yeah. with historic structures in Vermont. Thank you. I think that's really well said. Um, other concerns from board members, other perspectives, questions? I'm, All right. Adam, I'm, Adam has his hand up. Yep, yeah, okay. Um, just adding to what Michael had said, um, in the application, uh, Tucker had included his, in his particular case, his uh, yearly income from the last five years. And in in his capacity, uh, my opinion, he would not have been able to. And what I can attest to is um, I live in Plainfield, Vermont, and I have a um, significantly sized uh, bank, uh, bank barn that's dated to 1860. And I had significant damage in the flooding occur. And I just went through the SBA FEMA and SBA process and in needing a new roof um, that was uh, that was damaged and a foundation on two walls. Um, I'm I'm staring at a twenty six thousand um, dollar SBA loan to just uh, shore up those the, that damage where I because of my background and also my income, I'm, I'm capable of taking that burden on. And, and also want to preserve that property. But I do understand that it, for many, it's a significant burden to, to do. Absolutely. And if it was not for the SBA loan, I, I would, I would have made my best attempt um, to shore up the building under my own means. But, um, you know, thankfully in a, in a blessing in a way, uh, you know, with the SBA loan, I'm able to, to do the foundation properly as well as a, a new roof, you know, right. appropriate. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, anybody else? Further comments? Um, might we entertain a motion at this point? I'll make the motion to uh, 
uh, allow for the demolish demolishing of the uh, uh, barn at uh, 12 J Street as presented. There's a motion by Kevin. Any seconds out there? No second. All right. Um, discussion. Any further discussion? Points we should address. Main points that we may have missed. Okay. Uh, in which case, we are going to do a roll call vote. Uh, Kevin, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Joe, how do you vote? Yes. Michael. Yes. Brian. Yes. And I vote yes as well. So that is unanimously passed. Gene did not log on, did he, Meredith? I don't nope. see him. Okay. All right. Um. So we are all set. Um. Just a quick clarification question, if that's okay. Sure. Um. Would the board members like the decision to include some of Michael's commentary about the city's consideration of historic buildings and trying to, I mean, it's just a little commentary thing, but about trying to find ways to help home, homeowners be able to I think retain I think their buildings, great, you know, to yep. get that recorded. I think that's a really important part of uh, tonight's process. So yes, yep. I would like yep. that. And it, and I know that's something that the um, Montpelier Historic Preservation Commission had included as one of their goals to work into the new city plan for the um, historic resources chapter on for the city of Montpelier for a plan as a whole. Um, that's something they're pushing to make sure is in the city plan is trying to find ways to provide more resources to homeowners, to private property owners versus just the commercial buildings. Right. And doing it before it's all is lost, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That, 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 that maintenance of the buildings is as important as renovations. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, thank you very much Ed, for coming in and uh, Meredith, you want to let him know when you can expect to see you. Um, so, Adam, I'll make sure to follow up with Tucker as well. So he has a, a direct email from me on the process. But um, what the next step is working on the written decision. This is a pretty short staff report. The decision should be pretty short as well. Um, the staff report is usually kind of an outline for the decision. Um, we'll get that as quickly as possible, um, hopefully this week or next week. Um, and because there were no conditions on the decision, the permit will get issued at the same time. So it'll be getting that written, getting it signed by Sharon. Um, and then we will contact Tucker when those are ready so that he can pick things up. We'll probably have him pick him up if he's back in town um, versus trying to mail it. Yep. I, I believe he'll be back in town at, at the end of this week. Um, okay. Or, Perfect. Or, or next Monday at the latest. Great. Okay. Well, I will, I will make sure to email him so that when he can get that, he'll have the update. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Adam. And thank you, Jim. All right. So we have, um, minutes uh, to review. Has everybody had a chance to look at the uh, September 5th meeting minutes? I I did not see anything that I needed changed in there. Um, any other uh, changes for those minutes? Well, I in guess I'll case. make the motion make the motion again to to approve the minutes of the uh, September which date? Fifth. Oh, I was looking. Okay, September fifth. And uh, I'll second. And also, I'm not sure it really matters, but earlier when we approved the agenda, I was the one that seconded, and and not Michael. Hey, thanks. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those against? Okay. <laughs> uh, any other business? People have thoughts they want to get out here? Okay, our next I, meeting. Oh, sorry, Mary. Oh, just, just, I, I was just going to say a thank you to... Sorry, go ahead, Kevin. You go first. Okay, I just wanted to... When, when we were uh, uh, Zooming online during the pandemic, um, we were making decisions uh, in executive session. 
or, or what? And I just wanted to bring that up. I mean, so far we haven't dealt with anything that's particularly complicated or controversial, but I think it's something we should keep in mind um, because doing it on Zoom is not, definitely not the same as doing it as we are gathered uh, in a, in the council room. Um, yeah. So. I, I don't think it's Thank necessary you. for, for like, for instance, what we just dealt with today, this evening. Uh, I don't think there's any reason to go into executive session for that. Other than, other than, <laughs> what was that look? Uh, other than uh, uh, during the pandemic, we did everything. It didn't matter whether it was a slam dunk or whether it was something complicated. Uh, well, I, I mean, you know, I think. I always appreciate a good executive session, and I think that it's um, that it's good to have that, and it's great to point out that it's in our arsenal. And I also really appreciate as much of the process that we can do in front of the public as possible. I agree with that. Is my preference. Yeah, if we can, you know. Meredith, did you have something else? Uh, just a thank you to Michael Lazarczak because this is going to be his last meeting, is my understanding, as a board member. That's right. Is yeah, I had to put Montpelier on blast right before I moved to <laughs> Williston. So, there you go. Uh, well, we will, I will certainly miss your input, Michael. And I yeah, Michael, I you take care. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's it's been fun. I'm I'm just moving for personal reasons, no other reason than that. So I'll still be yeah. around and causing havoc and stow. So don't worry. <laughs> good, good luck. So you're not you're not leaving because of the DRB. That's that's yeah, right. Now. Yeah. Is the unpaid yeah, board it, position no. <laughs> the DRB could be pretty intimidating. <laughs> oh Michael's Michael's been on too. He's also been on the conservation commission. Yeah. So oh, Michael. Yeah. When you see he's lucky to get you. Um our next meeting is going to be on October second. Meredith, do we have any applications for it at this point? Yes. Um, so there are two that you can see on the pending applications page. Um, we have um, a addition. Um, it's a it's a building that's going to an addition that is going to connect 41 and 45 College Street. So it is a access addition, right? Basically, it's stairs and um, an elevator tower and ability for the students of the new school to be able to get between their two buildings. Um, that part is actually a administrative approval, but there are a couple of things that go along with it that only the DRB can approve. One is the fact that it um, adding that increases the footprint of the buildings beyond the um, max usual allowable footprint and then there's also they're requesting a um, fence in the back that is uh, eight foot high fence it's going to fence in an area for the students there um, so unfortunately those two things i can't do and then there's also um country club road there is an application for the conditional use of a temporary homeless shelter up there um and so that would be just for this winter um but so that application will be coming before the board as well who's the applicant in that case uh good sam okay good samaritan great well those both sound really interesting so that'll be good um any uh can i hear a motion to adjourn come on kevin Wait. It's quiet out there. <laughs> I'll make the motion to adjourn. I'll second it again. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, guys. We did it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, everybody. Have a good evening and a good week. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck, Bye. Michael. Thank you, everybody. See you in two weeks. <laughs>